Oof. Velvety smooth out of this 1200, huh? Take a listen. That's nice. The clutch feel on this bike is phenomenal. <laughs> the pull is just, it almost feels hydraulic. I mean, that's, that's how nice of a compliment I can give it. Look how playful it is. <laughs> Let's be honest, any day that I get to spend simping over a Triumph motorcycle is a pretty good day. I am so glad you guys clicked on this video because you and I are gonna go on a fun journey today riding and reviewing the 2021 Triumph Thruxton RS. This is a really cool motorcycle that we actually got as a loaner bike from the good folks over at Eurocycles. You guys know that Chris over there loves sending me bizarre and quirky bikes. He sent me the BMW R18, the MV Agusta Lusso Turismo Veloce Sport Touring thing. I can never remember the name of that thing. Sent me over the other BMW. I've got a race prepped RSV4 in the back over here. All kinds of great stuff that he sends over. And the reason he sends them over is because our channel is just so effusive towards his dealership. So if you guys are looking for a European bike, he sells MV Agustas, Ducatis, Aprilias, especially BMWs, Royal Enfields, even if that's your taste and pleasure, hit the link down below to Eurocycle. Check them out below. They ship all over the nation, so no matter where you live, they can get you a good price for any kind of motorcycle you're looking for for the European variety and flavor. Now. Why am I so effusive about this Triumph Thruxton RS? First of all, just look at it. Oh my God, this bike is so gorgeous. I'm sure my editor Yusaku would just layer over some beautiful B-roll that I've compiled here. But uh, this bike is so pretty. It is the classic, classic cafe racer thing, um, but done well and done right from the factory, which is something we're gonna talk about. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over the specifications on this bike, we're gonna get it out on the road and see what it's like to ride, and then we're gonna do a Q&A section from the good folks over on our Discord server. So let's learn a little bit more about the Triumph Thruxton RS. All right guys, so as I mentioned, the Thruxton RS is just such a beautiful motorcycle. I mean, look at the two-tone paint scheme here, the twin exit exhaust, the gold forks. I mean, this is your classic cafe racer stuff right here. And I think this bike just looks so cool. So first of all, price listed as is for this thing is $16,700, definitely not cheap, but also pretty cheap compared to looking at some of Harley's Heritage models, which is pretty cool compared to the specifications you get on those bikes. I think this bike's actually a pretty good deal. Uh, the Thruxton name actually comes from a 500 endurance race that ran on a former Royal Airfield, uh, excuse me, Air Force Airfield from the 50s until the 70s or so, and that debuted the Bonneville back in 1959. So this is the quintessential, absolute uh, progenitor cafe racer style bike, which is really cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the star of the show, which is this engine. So the Thruxton features the 1200cc 270 degree parallel twin engine we've seen in several of Triumph's model lineups. Uh, they've got it in the 1200 Scramblers and the Bonnevilles. This is a beautiful torque rich engine that just produces a awesome velvety amount of power. So nice, so smooth, so supple in the way it delivers power. Uh, in this Thruxton RS configuration, it's hopped up a little bit and it's got a 500 RPM rev ceiling higher than the standard 1200. Uh, and it's making 103 horsepower and 83 uh, foot pounds of torque. You've got sport, rain, and road mode as well on this machine, but to be honest, I've been riding this thing around and I kind of just kept it in sport mode. Didn't really need to see the need for uh, rain or road. Uh, Triumph does some really cool things with the packaging on this bike. You can see the blacked out radiator is sitting right alongside the frame there and it kind of melds into the blackness of the engine and the frame and you don't really see it. It doesn't have a big, you know, silver aluminum looking radiator. And you've also got this kind of faux carburetor situation here, which is really funny. This bike is of course EFI, but uh, Triumph tries to keep it really authentic looking. And uh, I think they've done a pretty good job, man. You've got the air fins and the kind of faux carburetor thing here and the big gap between the gas tank and the engine here. It looks cool, it looks the part, looks the business. Moving right along, uh, big feature on this bike, 
fully adjustable Showa Big Piston Forks. I'll show you guys this right over here. You got rebound and compression adjustment on these bad boys, which is pretty sweet. Beautiful set of forks here. And then of course, as well, out back, you've got twin Olin's piggyback shocks. So kind of a callback to the retro thing for the Bonnevilles. Uh, the Bonnevilles all come with a, a, a dual shock setup instead of the traditional mono shock you might see on sport bikes nowadays. Uh, it's kind of an old school thing. Uh, this feature is the same frame as the Bonneville, but it's just been kind of tuned a little bit. And I believe this swing arm is different. Um, I don't think this is the same swing arm that uh, the Bonnevilles come with. Uh, this bike also features these Metzler Racetech RR tires. Kind of a spicy setup for this kind of bike, man. This is some sticky rubber on this thing, and uh, I want to get it out on some serious twisties. I've only kind of been bopping around with it and kind of see how she does, because that's what this bike is all about. Um, so a couple more specs for you guys. Seat height on this bike is 31.8 inches, which is pretty approachable, not too bad. I'm not talking a 34 inch seat height or anything. Weighs about 480 pounds or so. Triumph only claims dry weight, so I had to fudge those numbers a little bit to make it work. Uh, it's a chain drive, like a proper motorcycle, you know, not a belt drive or a shaft drive or anything like that. Um, got a 3.8 gallon fuel capacity and they say it averages about 35 miles to the gallon. So I bet you you could do about 120 miles on this tank. This is definitely a uh, interesting motorcycle from the sense that it is not super duper committed from an ergonomics perspective. And uh, it's actually a bike you can live with pretty well. I'll show you guys that in my ride and review of it. Um, but it's a bike that, you know, the ergo package is actually pretty, pretty decent. Um, it's got these really cool uh, wire spoked wheels, not cast wheels. They just look so beautiful. And one of the cool features on this bike as well, check this out, absolutely mint. Brembo M50 calipers here, radially mounted. Are you joking? Beautiful, beautiful setup here. Generous master cylinder as well. Talking a real, real sport bike stuff here, guys. This thing's pretty slick. So uh, covering the specs now, why don't we uh, get it out on the road? Let's see what she's all about. All right, folks, clearly some of you haven't understood yet that you need to get yourself clean. So we're actually gonna do a demonstration here with our Manscaped products. Now listen, you start off in the shower, go for the shampoo, right? Go for right there, get yourself some shampoo, boom. Work that in there nice and good. Work that in there. You get yourself the body wash, boom, body wash. You're looking so clean, you're looking so fresh. You gotta make sure to be nice and fresh and clean. Then finish it up with some hydration. Hydrate your body, feels so good. Yum, 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 that feels nice. But you're gonna wanna make sure that you're protected for the whole day. Make sure you get some nice deodorant on there too. Deodorize your body. We're talking your balls. We're talking your balls. Your armpits, hell, even the back of your neck. Who knows where you're gonna do with that deodorant. Finally, wrap it up with some lip balm. Just do nice and clean. Nice. Just do nice and clean. Nice. nice and clean, make sure you don't got those grubby little lips. And then look at that, beautiful. You're looking so fresh, you're looking so clean. Hit the link down below and get yourself 20% off automatically added to your order and free shipping on all these amazing new Manscaped products. Don't actually do that. That's, it's not good. All right, folks, we've chatted about the specs enough. Let us just swing a leg and ride this fantastic motorcycle. Turning it on here in neutral. Got to pull in the clutch like all triumphs. Oof. Velvety smooth out of this 1200, huh? Take a listen. That's nice. Classic sound. My favorite thing about this bike when you jump on it, first of all, ergonomics. Wow. So comfortable. A lot like an SV650X. This is not some, you know, super high peg, hunched over race bike thing. It's actually really nice. Um, my pegs are pretty low. These clip-ons rise quite a bit out of the triple, as you can see here. You could install clubman bars me down here, but I'm not sure why you'd want to be, honestly. Uh, I don't want to be. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, get on the road, shall we? First thing I want to show you guys Oh, analog clocks. Look at that. So beautiful. But you get this bike up into second, look how playful it is. <laughs> Big amount of torque out of this P-Twin, man. Big amount. Super fun. 
You know, I noticed that in the Street Scrambler that we had, it was a really, really playful motorcycle. Um, and that character has definitely translated over to this Thruxton RS. Yeah, that's nice, man. That's a good amount of torque and power out of this thing. So I figured we would uh, hit up the twisties immediately because that's kind of what this bike's all about, right? This bike's about carving up your local twisties, having some fun. So how did the initial impressions feel? Well, they're very good. I got to tell you, man, uh, these Showa forks and these Metzler Race Tech tires, they're working well for me here. Um, the controls, oh, Triumph does such a good job with their controls. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but I feel like Triumph between their braking feel and their throttle, it's just so nice, man. The fueling is perfect. The clutch feel on this bike is phenomenal. <laughs> the pull is just, it almost feels hydraulic. I mean, that's, that's how nice of a compliment I can give it. Although I hate hydraulic clutches because they add unnecessary complexity to a motorcycle. And especially when you can get a motorcycle with a cable throttle that feels this friggin' good, dude. Like, you don't need a hydraulic clutch. Uh, I really don't understand why people put hydraulic clutches on bikes, and manufacturers do especially. Maybe there's a reason that I don't know of, because I might be ignorant to it, but I digress. So, throttle response, we're in sport mode. We're looking down at this beautiful brushed aluminum housing for the twin analog clocks here. Classic motorcycling right here, guys. The uh, Honda Hornet has this same setup, and I love tachometer speedometer uh, my Hayabusa has that too I just think it's it's just a classic perfect thing for a bike you should have two clocks or if not just one big tachometer with the speedo readout uh, something has to have a needle on it uh, for me personally on a bike I just love that so this motorcycle uh, you know it's kind of going down the road you're handling these bumps and undulations reasonably well it is set up a little more aggressive a little more stiff than something like the uh, Street Scrambler uh, because it's designed to be very sporty in its intention. But I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the performance out of this engine. Um, it pulls harder than I thought it would, for sure. Uh, definitely harder than I thought it would. And the coolest part is about this motor, and the reason why uh, it's one of my favorite power plants of any modern twin cylinder engine, um, it has a dual nature to it. Down low, I mean, you can absolutely lug this thing. Here, I'll put it up into fourth here through this corner. I mean, I'm lugging right now. I'm doing 2,000 RPM, right? And I'm just flicking it through, riding it like Miss Daisy. You get on the gas, you got torque, man. Look at that. You got usable, ample torque. And the sound this thing makes is lovely. Uh, it's like a really thick piece of pound cake or something. It's, it's really special. It's really nice. Uh, yeah. Now, these Brembos, these M50s, I do have a little bit of uh, criticism about them. They're supposed to be super aggressive, you know, big honk and stonk and powerful brakes. But I find these brakes to not be as powerful as I would like. Maybe that's down to the fact that this bike does weigh a little bit extra than a traditional uh, middleweight sport bike or, you know, even an 800 or 900 cc sport bike. Um, and I, I find that although the braking performance, I would rate it like an eight out of 10, it's not a nine or a nine and a half out of 10. And with M50s and a nice uh, master cylinder that I'm pretty sure is the same one my Daytona came with because this, uh, this throttle tube and this uh, master cylinder all looks to be about the same stuff that my Daytona used to use. Uh, I think it is. Not to say that this is a parts bin bike, but they didn't reinvent the wheel. I thought I'd have a little snappier Braking. It doesn't. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Uh, throttle response is just sublime, dude. Perfect. You roll off of here, roll back on. No snatchiness, no weirdness. Just smooth. Perfect. The lever feels are nice, too. They're thin and rounded. Um, and I'm, I'm having a really nice time on this bike. I've actually been riding this bike around uh, quite a bit. I actually took it back home and I rode it around a little bit here in Austin, and now I'm doing this video with it. Um, 
it's a really cool motorcycle because it has the dual nature to it that I like out of these more road oriented sport bikes. Um, they are at the same time total cruiser machines like you could totally just cruise along with this like like look at that I'm, I can just put it up into fourth here totally just cruise with this bike but if I want to flick the wick I can do wheelies I can power out of corners I can charge into corners if I want to as well I mean what a flexible and cool motorcycle one point I want to make is uh, this bike's transmission feels incredible um, Triumph does such a good job with their transmissions and making them nice and snickety. That's the word I always use because it feels like the gears just find their place so beautifully. The the action on the shift lever is just so nice. I remember when I uh, test rode that R9T 40th anniversary scrambler uh, that uh, Chris sent me over from Eurocycle and the gearbox felt like a Grom gearbox. It was so bad. The lever was all over the place. I didn't know what gear I was in. Um, it was completely different than this thing where this thing feels properly nice, man. And it's so cool how, you know, some bikes, they coax you into doing certain things. Like you ride an RS660, you want to you wanna flick it into corners a little harder. You want to have some fun with it, you know? This thing, it's like, it's such a cliche to say, but kind of like the old school Bonnevilles, they're a, they're a do anything bike. They're they're down for anything you want to throw at them, and I think that's why Triumph has done such a cool job with the Bonneville line and has built such an interesting uh, modular platform with which to build like a proper off road adventure bike, like the Scrambler 1200s. You've got the even the bobber, the you know the kind of cruiser bike they make. This thing, the Thruxton, the Bonneville, the standard bike. I think Triumph is hands down doing the best heritage styled bikes out of anyone right now. Out of anybody, dude. And the reason is, is because, yeah, like this thing, you look down, you got the brushed aluminum, you got the Monza gas tank, you got the tank strap right there. It's all very heritage and cool, but then at the same time, unlike a Harley, it does this. That was first gear floating the wheel. Yeah. And it's not just a one-off model like Harley Sportster S where they're like, oh yeah, we got this heritage bike that kind of, you know, goes pretty good and has some callbacks. No, it's like Triumph makes like six or seven different bikes that all have this character and style of being retro inspired, but but still good, you know, like still a, like a good motorcycle, man. With proper controls mounted in the right spots and with enough ground clearance to where you can actually hustle the thing around some corners like i would take this thing to a track day why not <laughs> i'd love to pass some some doofuses on r6s on the outside with my thrust in rs that would be so much fun and it's like i don't know how triumph does it but they just build in this fun factor on these bikes i don't know how they do it because like you would look at a bike like this and you wouldn't think it'd be this much fun to ride and it was the same thing with the Street Scrambler when we had it back in 2020. I was like, I, 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 there's just some magical quality about them. They're so fun to ride, really rewarding to ride. Oh, that 1200's so sweet. <laughs> uh, and I know a lot of people uh, kind of, they kind of lambast me a little bit. They're like, oh, this, this guy, like, he, he jumps on any bike. He likes all of them. But come on, man, like. Like, all bikes are pretty fun, you know? I can find something to have fun with any bike. But this one is really good. This is a really special, really sweet motorcycle. And I'm really happy to be, be riding it around. This thing's awesome. Uh, the fact that it'll float the front wheel on power, ripping down in first gear, that is so fun. You go here. Just have fun with it, man. Tuck in like those... 60s cafe racer bros you know <laughs> god that clutch pull is so smooth so accurate downshifts are just an absolute breeze on this thing you got a lot of torque on tap you got to watch that a little bit when you're exiting corners get some squirm out of the rear <laughs> yeah man this is this is so sweet this is like what you wish your cafe bike was like man like this is actually like what you really wish that your cafe bike was like 
and it's just not and it never will be because the factory made this one man it's just better they just did a better job than you ever could and that's okay it's okay to admit that and sure a lot of people will balk at the price of this thing sixteen thousand seven hundred dollars for the paint scheme and all the cool stuff and blah 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 but if you have the money what does it matter you know i think a lot of people get lost in the sauce and trying to create the maximum value proposition for motorcycles based on dollar per horsepower and i've said it many many times if that was the case then everybody should just ride around on craigslist leader bikes five grand 175 horsepower go nuts dude that's the best option right but it's not because motorcycling has more to offer than just maximizing dollar per horsepower because that's super boring to do um there is such a thing about the quality of the performance there is such a thing about the sum of its parts the, the way everything works and the ergonomics and the feeling you get out of the engine and the way it makes its power how much torque does it have down low what's the top end feel like like all that stuff matters it's not just about horsepower and dollar figures like that's so boring <laughs> it's so boring um yeah yeah so i'm gonna keep having fun with this bike uh, but the road test is pretty conclusive. Uh, it is a ton of fun to ride. Uh, it's it's genuinely blowing me away at how capable it is and how fun it is. And I haven't even really set it up. Honestly, like, I got a little lazy. I left the shop. I didn't even check the tire PSI. I didn't even check the suspension. I didn't even set it up for, like, for me to ride it, which I normally do with all my bikes so I can get a proper baseline. And this thing still works pretty damn good, um, <laughs> which is a real testament to this bike. And I just love how you can cruise with it. Look at this. I'm just cruising on this bike. This is absolutely lovely. Uh, I, I love this bike. Love this bike. And you can call me a Triumph Simp all you want. I don't really care. You can ride this bike and you tell me you don't love it. Because this Thruxton RS is absolutely fantastic to ride. Really a special, fun motorcycle. And I wish more people made bikes like it. But with all that being said let's get this bike back in the shop let's do our discord q and a and uh, let's wrap this video up shall we all right guys now that we wrapped up our ride and impression on this bike let's jump over to discord and see what questions people had for me about this machine bank shift bill wants to know how british does the thruxton make you feel uh, i gotta say i do feel pretty like you know Union Jack, British fish and chips while riding it. Um, it, it does make me feel pretty British. Uh, Jeb wants to know, be honest, would you rather this over a Royal Enfield Continental? Any day of the week. It's difficult to compare the two because this is almost three times the money of a Royal Enfield Continental, but it's at least twice the bike, uh, if not 150% the bike. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, CG Zinho asks, as a daily, would you pick that Thruxton or a Speed Twin? Um, honestly, like I said in my ride and review, ergonomics are really pleasant on this thing. I would not mind riding this on the daily. Uh, it's pretty comfortable and it just looks so good. Such a good looking bike. Uh, Otter Plus asks, is that Thruxton seat as uncomfy as it looks? Seems like it's only baked beans away from being a British breakfast. Uh, honestly, this, this seat is actually pretty comfortable. Um, it's got a good amount of padding and support on it, but it still retains this really cool kind of stylistic element to it. Um, Triumph did a really good job making it so that this bike is actually rideable and nice over a lot of like custom cafe builds that are not really rideable or nice, you know? Uh, Vince82 asks, Thruxton uh, versus Z900 RSSE, entirely subjective. If you were to buy one, what would you get? I would probably get the Thruxton. I just feel like this has more of the flavor and charm of a cafe bike that I would be interested in, which is that classic Bonneville Triumph bike, as I mentioned in the vlog. Uh, the T110 was like one of my, kind of very early kind of lookings into for motorcycling. And it's always been there with me. Um, and I, I just think this is the one I would get completely personally. It doesn't mean it's better than the other one. It's just what I would probably do. Uh, Jim Fire asks, is the Thruxton a true sport bike in a retro skin or a retro bike in a sporty skin? I mean, if you're comparing it against new age modern sport bikes, it's, it's missing a couple components. It's missing a couple flavors and things, right? Um, but for what Triumph was working with here, which is this big steel cradle Bonneville frame, a big 1200cc engine, 
they did a remarkable job in making this bike very sporty and feeling very sporty, like a real modern sport bike, but it just doesn't have the initial flick in and sharpness that something like a uh, R7 or an RS660 has, or even, uh, you know, something higher up in the category, like a Brutale 800 or something like that. Um, it, this is just a bit of a different thing. So I would say this is a retro bike in a sport skin, which is not a bad thing, especially if you're a road rider, particularly not a track day warrior, but a road guy. Come on, it looks so good. You'd want to you'd want to be carving up twisties with this thing. Trust me. Wyatt asks, why should I buy a Thruxton RS versus an FTR Carbon? Well, for a couple reasons, in my opinion. Um, number one, the Thruxton weighs less. Number two, I think the Thruxton is a little bit cooler than the FTR Carbon. Um, it has a different flavor and charm to it. Like I said in the vlog, the engine is just so velvety and smooth and everything works really, really well. Uh, whereas, some areas the FTR did not really work that well for me and it is a little bit heavier. So I think the Thruxton is pretty sweet. Turagua Racer asks, does it feel like a old Bonnie or is it refined and modern like a new modern era Triumph of today? Um, super refined, super buttery smooth, super dialed in. Um, this doesn't feel like an old bike at all, uh, but it has a lot of that cool retro charm about it. And again, this tw this 1200cc engine, dude, is just so nice. It's so, one of my favorite engines that I've tried in a while. Uh, really, really nice. Full Metal Corgi says, would you ever consider putting clip-ons and exhaust wrap on it to go full hipster? So it actually already has clip-ons on it, but they're nice and raised up over the triple, which gives you a more everyday rider kind of feeling over it. Um, I would personally, if I bought this bike, which I'm not, I'm not going to, it doesn't make any sense for my stable, but if I were going to, um, I would I would not touch a thing. Triumph basically made it perfect. Um, I would maybe put an exhaust on it to just give me a little bit more sound, and that's it. Uh, you, do, you don't need to do anything else. I'd maybe get rid of those turn indicators too. That's it. Uh, I would not wrap this thing or change the clip-ons. Um, you can buy an old Bonneville and do that if you wanted to, but this thing is, is just so nice. Um, it would be pretty silly to do that, in my opinion. Uh, Turago Racer asks, again, is it fair to compare it to a street or speed triple in the performance department? Um, no, it's not, it's not fair to do that uh, because the speed triple and the street triple have very, very dedicated frames and very dedicated purposes to them. Um, you don't want to uh, compare a bike that has an old school cradle steel frame and a big lumpy engine uh, to a bike that, I mean, the Street Triple literally still uses the 2013 plus Daytona frame, which is one of the greatest sport bike frames ever made, in my opinion. Um, so it's, it's not exactly fair to compare them apples to apples. Stelio C, uh, he asks, what kind of riding is the Thruxton best for? And this is a good question. I really think this bike is perfect for the weekend rip around town, uh, bopping out to your local bike night or something like that, and a beautiful bike that a lot of people are gonna be looking at and kind of turn heads. Um, this is a great weekend bike to rip up some canyons or twisties. Uh, I could definitely see someone living in like Southern California having this as their weekend toy, going out to Malibu, ripping up some canyon roads. I could, I could totally see that because it's a bike you wanna park and have people really look at because it's just so good looking. Uh, that's the kind of riding I would do with it. Wyatt asks, why buy the Thruxton over the Speed Twin? Similar power, but the Speed Twin is cheaper and more comfortable. That's fair. Um, I think when you get the Thruxton, you're just getting the uh, top shelf component, especially in this RS configuration. You're getting the top shelf components. You're getting a bike that just has that Thruxton uh, name on the side of it. So it's just built to be a little bit more sporty. It's on the sticky tires. Um, I just, I don't know, I feel like if you want a Thruxton, you know you want a Thruxton and they're very specific, but they are very similar to the Speed Twins, um, but they just have a little bit of a different character and quality about it, uh, especially over the traditional Bonnies and the regular Bonnies too. But honestly, they're all pretty good. Like we had a Bonneville back in 2020 that we gave away, a Street Scrambler. That bike was awesome. The bike was really, really, really cool. Uh, Turagua Racer asks another question, says, would you rather have this instead of a modded Bonnie that can deliver nearly the same or identical performance? To me, buying this motorcycle isn't just about the performance, it's about buying a Triumph ready custom bike kind of like this. I understand that a lot of people want to customize their own bikes and that's the whole goal of it and make it their own, but for me, I'm not really into that and I think Triumph did such a great job in making this a well-working and good-looking motorcycle 
that I wouldn't really be interested in buying a Bonneville and going through all of that uh, personally. Brackenis asks, is it worth the price tag or would the Royal uh, Enfield Continental GT be enough? Um, I, I think the price tag's a little spicy. I would have loved to have seen this thing at the $14,500 mark. Um, I don't think it needed to be 16.7. That starts to get a little spicy. That's like, you know, top end leader bike money, uh, top end naked bike money. I mean, the Tuono you can have for $15,000 nowadays. So if you're buying this, you really love Triumph. You really love the RS thing. You really love the je ne sais quoi that comes with these sorts of motorcycles. Um, but when you consider it over a Royal Enfield Continental GT, you're just not even playing in the same category, man. Like I just, you know, I think you can get the look and feel of this in the Royal Enfield Continental, but having ridden one of those versus this, there is no comparison. <laughs> Everything feels great on this motorcycle. The brakes, the throttle, the engine feel, the way it tips into corners. The Royal Enfield's a budget bike and it's never gonna not be a budget bike. So you can't really compare the two. Biscotti Boy 620 asks, when is Triumph gonna write you a check? They don't need to write me a check. I am doing just fine. Uh, Baron asks, would you say it's worth the price over a Street Triple RS performance wise? Again, if you're, if you're just doing the spec sheet stuff and being like, well, this one has 128 horsepower and this one only has 109, why is it so much more? Th this is a different type of bike. It's not trying to be a sport naked, you know, track day ready bike like the Street Triple. It's a different thing. It's a retro bike that's been fitted with, you know, go fast parts and has been massaged a little bit. Totally different riding experience. Um, and it's hard to compare the two. Uh, Emperor DD asks, how does the Thruxton feel? Does it feel kind of balanced like a Ducati Monster or does it feel kind of front heavy like a Scrambler? It feels a lot closer to a Ducati Monster a uh, proper sport naked bike over something like a, a scrambler or something like that. Triumph's done a really good job in making this a well handling bike, but I told you guys that in my vlog and review. Uh, Dojo asks, how does the Thruxton compare to the Triumph Bonneville in terms of build quality and handling? Uh, this handles totally differently. It's on a really sticky set of rubber, 17 inch wheels, uh, lowered handlebars or clip-ons here rather, a really skinny shaped gas tank. Um, the riding experience is very different from Bonneville that literally just feels like a super relaxed, chilled out cruiser, which is really nice. And Charlemagne here asks, how fast does the Thruxton feel compared to an Indian FTR or a Sportster S? Does it handle better? They're all in the same price range, so it's a good comparison to make. So I haven't ridden the Sportster S, so I can't comment on that, but compared to the FTR, uh, this bike doesn't feel as like super hopped up and rev happy. The Indian FTR, the motor in that is like an angry snarling kind of engine and it really wants to rev out and just go. This has like really nice slow down punch, but it makes a good amount of power at the top end too. It reminds me a lot more of BMW's uh, R9T engine, the boxer twin that's in that. It's really similar to that engine where it's like, it just makes good low down grunt and a lot of ample broad power throughout the rev range and not a lot in the top end. Um, so between Thruxton RS, FTR and Sportster S, which are all these kind of like retro e-bikes that are kind of trying to be sporty as well. Uh, this is my favorite one that I've ridden so far. I haven't ridden the Sportster S, but something tells me that given the small amount of suspension travel and kind of weird ergonomics, I will probably still prefer this over that. Uh, the FTR is a total goon bike, which makes it really fun. And it's a little more upright and kind of motardy, which is kind of fun. But this thing is uh, really composed and really balanced, really nice motorcycle. Uh, so that's gonna wrap up the Discord Q and A. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Big shout out to Eurocycle again for loaning this bike out and letting us ride and review it and enjoy it. Make sure you hit the link down below and see if they've got a cool European motorcycle. If you're in the market, they deliver all over the United States. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yamino. Yeah,